Okay. Welcome back, everybody. Today we're, uh, I'm gonna attempt to finish this exercise on again on Kaggle. Kaggle is amazing. I hope you guys, every everybody's okay, All right? Uh, so we are. Um, I'm trying to continue this uh, deep learning uh, exercise on Kaggle. We are, I think, exercise. Um. Or um. Exercise seven, I think. Uh, anyway, so this is the. Um, hold on, hold on. <clears throat> okay, here's the uh, exercise. So introduction. Again, this is a uh, classifications, uh, simple neural network. Okay. We've seen how to build a model from scratch to identify handwritten digits. Okay. Um, now we are going to model to identify a different types of clothing. It's uh, the database is called Amnis Fashion, I think, right? Whether it's a it's a shirt, it's an underwear, or it's a tongue, whatever, what have you. Uh, to make the models that train quickly, we'll work with very small uh, images. Means low resolution. Means instead of like, let's say 500 by 500 uh, pixels. We work with only 64 by 64 or 32 by 32. Okay, small, uh, small picture, small re resolution, low resolution. As an example, your model will take an image will like this and identify as a shoe. <clears throat> okay. So it's um. It's an object classification, basically. Yeah, uh, we're gonna use a convolu convolution uh, neural network because in, it's an image. Remember, convolution is basically if you have an image, let's say, uh, uh, that like this, this, um, this uh, shoes. Oh, I think I got a. Let's see. I got a nice. Um, Or I got a nice. Um, I can show it to you. Just hold on. How does the image? Um, um, image kernel kernels works. Okay. So, so this is the image, right? And then this is on every pixel, right? So, um, and then you can look to like this is uh, called a sharpened kernel. Let's say we pick three by three. So the depending on the what size do you want to put, where uh, we want to take. Uh, this one is three by three, right? Um, and then let's say blur, for example, right? And then this, uh, and this is uh, basically the weights, right? All of the weights that we need to kind of uh, pick and adjust, and this is the the adjusting process is called basically backpropagation, right? Using a gradient descent method, right? Um, so, so this image is um, let me see. Yeah, so you, you, you can you can you can uh, choose what kind of filter, right? So this is what it does. So uh, we are picking three by three, right? So it's it's like a you you kind of slide the window, the the kernel, throughout the the images, right? And then you can choose the parameter of how big is the size of this kernel, this window. Uh, this one we are choosing three by three, right? Right. So as we slide. As you can see, the the one on the right, right, it's also it's uh, giving you a new um, a new output, right? So this is what it does, convolutional uh, 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 method, right? So you just keep on doing this slide, slide, right, giving you a new output every time you slide. 
so basically it's it's basically it's like converting um um it's a way to uh, uh converting uh, uh uh numbers basically right right so hopefully that gives you an intuition right and also the details of how the underlying uh, uh convolution neural or or just the convolution uh works right okay so we have this image right and then during uh, data preparation the code is applied you don't need to change it just render cell below so as usual uh, you import the numpy again uh, numpy is, is a is a python uh, library that uh, deals with um, uh, array competition uh, yeah so we can compute it really really fast yeah why you want to use numpy because it's so much faster so much easier you you abstract a higher level of um, uh, competition instead of computing uh, a number one by one you're computing it in, in a list in array in a in a tuple or sorry in array it's just array um i have a series also in in python about uh, numpy uh, also it's ongoing but you can uh, check it out too okay um it's also importing um train trust uh, train test split method so uh, this is a procedure or a function uh, inside sklearn right basically to uh, it's, it's an algorithm to process or to divide to split the the data the training data in uh that you put into two training train and test that's that's what it, uh that's basically uh, what it does right and then from tensorflow python we import cross cross is a high level uh abstraction of um uh, package for uh, deep learning basically so uh, we can uh, uh, program it much much easier instead of with uh, let's say a hundred lines of codes if you don't import keras right with you uh, with or using keras you just use like probably 10, line, 10 lines of codes and it's much much easier to understand right it's more intuitive um, so we set the image rows and image column 28 by 28 right for the pictures right uh the number of classes that we want to identify is 10 right yeah, so it's the type of uh so this is uh we are going to identify what kind of um, uh, fashion or uh, type of uh, shirt right whether it's a shirt is is a long shirt is probably a jacket probably it's a it's a it's a tongue it's an underwear what have you right so there are 10 classes um so over here we're defining a, a function to prepare uh, to prep the data right uh, basically uh, what it does is uh, to to uh, before you can put the data uh, into the um, um, uh, neural network uh, you have to kind of like massage it a little bit right so over here you want to you take the train size uh, which is uh, where is the train size I think you get it from the the trend size and the validation size that you can identify and then the raw data right um, and then you put it into y and then you you output the y using a this is uh, using a categorically uh, function um, with with the num class right uh, We'll, we'll take a look what's what's really behind this uh, 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 once we fork this notebook and then you take the x right from the raw data basically um, and then you reshape it uh, using the number of images with image rows and image columns um, this is I think one I'm not sure about this and then you want to uh make everything between zero and one so you divide it by 255 remember a pixel oh one is the the number of channel in this case is um it's a black and white channel uh sorry in black and white images it's only one channel if you have a color images you have three channel red green and blue right and or it could be cmyk but i think in this case uh we're using the uh, rgb red green and blue 
right? Um, so yeah, so you 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 just make it the value between zero and one. So you divide it by two hundred fifty-five. Remember, a pixel uh, uh, value is from zero to two fifty-five. Uh, ranges from zero. Uh, I think it's the darkest. Yeah, the darkest, and then two fifty-five is the, the the brightest. And you want to uh, identify that into uh, put it into a variable where you put the uh, the training um, data. Right, uh, it's a CSV file. Again, we can take a look at again. Uh, what is that? Uh, and then the fashion data we load it using a NumPy uh, command, right? So we we put where the file is. Uh, skip rows one delimiter. I'm not sure about this. Yeah, and then after that we put uh, that into the function of prep data. Yeah, with the train size 50,000 and uh, validation uh, size uh, 5,000. So we execute this function over here, prep data, the one we just defined here, right, into X and Y. Okay. All right. Uh, so <clears throat> this, this is just uh, preparation, right? Uh, data preparation, okay? Thing. Uh, we'll we'll fork it first here. I'm gonna fork this now. Come on. Does it work? Oh, it's working. It's it's slow. It is slow. So I just want to show you if you have uh, any question about the Keras because you're using Keras, you can just go to the, on this website that the Keras, uh, Keras uh, documentation, right? And then you can just uh, read it. So here uh, we are. We are going to use like convolution 2D later on, right? And then you can just read what are the arguments: like filter, kernel size, strides, padding, data format, and so on, right? And then, um, and it will give you what's what what are what was the meaning of those? Like the filter is basically a dimensionality of the output space, right? Uh, the number of output filters in the convolution, right? It's taking a long time. Taking a long time. We will, I, sh I should have forked it first. So we can just go ahead with it. Okay, I think it's ready. It's cute. GPU on. Initializing. Come on. I'll just make it uh, bigger for you guys so it's easier, right? Okay. It should be ready. No, still queuing. Okay. So the next step after you, we prep the model, we prep uh, the data, right? Data preparation. Um, so uh, in data preparation, we we need to be more uh, familiar with uh, NumPy because that's uh, where we kind of uh, process the data. You know, like you 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 make it like um, uh, like more uh, the format of the data has to be like ready before you input it. That's what uh, you can think of it like that. Data preparation is about reformatting the data. You know, uh, whether the data is, uh, you want to be from, from zero to one, the data, uh, uh, the format of the data, the data, for example, you want, uh, for example, um, all of the uh, samples like on the left side and then on the right side, there's, there's that label, right? 
because uh, a training a data you need you need the sample you need the for example the 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 example of the image right for uh, b uh, to to be put in a neural network and you need also to label that sample what is that label for example in this uh, fashion amnes data let's say you have a pictures of a t-shirt so you need to tell the computer that's t-shirt that's the label right so you have to reformat it in such a way in a tabular form uh, and then you have to uh, and the computer uh, is is very kind of a finicky right the the input on in bef uh, into the neural network has to be on a precise kind of format right um, so sometimes it doesn't work pro probably for like uh, 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 the format is too big it doesn't work let's say you want to put let's say 1000 by let's say uh, arbitrary number 1000 by 1500 it doesn't work you have to reduce that probably to uh, to I don't know 64 by 64 so how do you how do you reformat something so big you know into something so small and then how do you put all of those labels right into um, um, into the associated uh, uh, examples so that's what data pro uh, preparation is all about right okay hopefully now okay it's working now great we can just ignore this so you can see here at the at, at the input you have a fashion amnes data right so if you look at the structure of the um the the input uh, data you have a, it's a CSV file, right? You have the train, right? And if you open it up, uh, this is like the structure. So you have the label uh, on the leftmost column, right? Lab label, right? And I, so it's already being labeled, I guess. And then you have the pixel one until, I guess, uh, I, I don't know, what pixel is this? It's going to be a lot, I think. So it has a, I think 19. Yeah. Okay. 19 pixels. So 1 to 19, right? You can see here uh, 20 by 785 columns, right? So we have 785 um, kind of uh, training data. And the label is already on the left side, right? Uh, and then remember, uh, I think we are trying to categorize into 10 label 10 classes right 10 different classes over there right okay that's good yeah, if you look at now the test data and remember the training data we're going to divide this into two training and validation right uh, 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 the reason why you want to do that because you want your uh, model not to to overfit you want the model to overgeneralize so this is just one of the trick in in deep learning or in data science or in machine learning to always kind of um i don't know i never see an example where you just um or you don't use uh, probably i've seen in a, in a in a machine learning model you don't do a validation but in deep learning probably is a kind of standard practice to kind of uh, always divide uh, probably i'm wrong but uh, the way I, I so far i've seen all of the example in deep learning uh, uh, neural network is uh, they, they always divide the training into two uh, so train and validation and i think well, uh, uh, one of the reasons uh, they divide that um, is to uh, to make uh, uh, to want to make sure your 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 model doesn't kind of overfit in the real world, you know. Uh, of course, you still have the test data, which you can uh, test it again and you can see. But you you kind of have a like a a gauge already, like how good is your model, right? Before because uh, think about it like this. So when you want to develop, let's say your 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 uh, you are into a uh, Kaggle competition, right? Uh, let's say this is a Kaggle competition, and you want to um, uh, uh, make this uh, happen. The the comp uh, to 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 classify uh, ten uh, classes of uh, uh, fashion or of uh, type of shirts or type of you know things that we wear, right? Um, 
and you want to 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 ideally you want to be like number one right or like top 10 right who wants to be like in the, in the, in the bottom rank, rank right so ideally you want to to be one of the best right your model right so you're given a, let's say this one a 785 um uh, uh training data training data right um and of course the the i think the test data you're not given the test data well you, probably you're given too but um uh even even if it's given right and then you already train it and then if you don't uh, put anything or you don't put set you don't put set aside some part of it as a validation data then what's going to happen let's say after you train the seven you put all the 785 images right into all for training data right and then and then uh it just so happened your your model is good it's giving you let's say 90 98 percent accuracy right with only like two three percent of uh error right so you're, you're happy you think you're good to go but when you test it for example um it becomes like only 70 percent or 60 percent that means your model is overfitting remember a uh, neural network is basically a curve fitting mechanism right that's the way i see it uh, at least uh, to put it into perspective basically you have all of this um, curve right like like two-dimensional three-dimensional or even you know four-dimensional which, which i couldn't imagine and then you're trying to fit uh this this model of 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 all of this uh like curve um into 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 um into the thing that you predict right so if this curve think of it is like a mass you're like a you know like a mass you're wearing a mass right and so if it's if the face of uh the test data for example it, it fits the mass then uh it will be able to identify oh that that's the one um uh it's classified as as a go or not right so um uh, what am i talking about here okay okay yeah the, the purpose of validation right so if you if you don't have any like validation and then you you test it and then and it's, it's and then it, it drops really low like 70 percent and then you're like shocked and then you do not know any like i think any like strategy how do you like improve it right you're like okay you can like probably improve it once you know one or twice uh, but you still have uh you only have like a only the test data so i think the validation is kind of like a backup mechanism kind of you know because you you before you even test it uh with the test data you can test it with this validation and see if your model is already like doing uh well or not or, or like rubbish your model right so that's the way i see it anyway going back to this so we can see that we have 785 um uh example uh, training data right and then we have also the test data also 785 right also 20 columns okay okay it looks good right so if you if you notice the pixel right it's the is like from zero to 255 right and if you if you put just put you know you don't pre-process this data you just put whatever over here on csv and then you just put it onto the neural network it won't work right that's why there's a pre-processing you have to kind of somehow um, massage this data into a format that um, um, the neural network would like right okay so that's that's about the pre-processing data okay so let's let's do this let's let's uh let's just run this right um okay let's run this bum, 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 bum. it's gonna take some time how many seconds one two three four five six seven eight nine ten it's got some time yeah. and this is already using gpu right oh okay it's done it is done okay
Um, what am I doing now right now? Okay. I want to see. I wonder if it's going to take so, so long. If I want to sh see like one by one. Right. Um, oh, oh, okay. Let's see if you want to see the X, right, and the Y. Let's see what it looks like. I hope I hope I'm not gonna like put all of the data like all over a place because I think this is gonna be like a big data, right? There you go. So this is like what it looks like, the X and the Y, right? Um, so you can see um, they they put it into an array. Um, the value is between like zero, zero on one. Um, the Y is the label. I don't know why. Yeah, so this is what it looks like. Okay, I guess, I guess it doesn't show like zero point, uh, so if you can see here it's like zero dot point right um i want to see what's just if it's x what does it look like label train label Okay, it'll take some time. Uh, no, it's taking a long time. Okay, never mind. Okay, so this is the X looks like. Okay, so basically it's it's, it's putting it into a like a like an array, and the value of this is between zero to one, right? Ah, so it's each of them it's only like one okay okay and why is the this is just to give you an idea what it looks like the data after being kind of massage being uh, this uh, pre-process right because it, it, it kind of like lo looks complicated all of this uh, like function right but what does it do exactly so um, if you don't really understand I really also like doesn't really understand exactly what's going on here right or one by one right but I know kind of like uh, like uh, in, intuitively know what's going on. Uh, basically, it's trying to reshape the f the formatting of the data and then and then convert it into just z between zero and one. That's what basically it is, right? So this is the label, right? Zero or one. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll t I'll take that. Okay, now we have to um, spec okay specify the model, right? So steps create a, se a sequential model, call it a fashion model. Okay, so now say fashion model. Equals to. I think that's the way to do it, right? Um, let's cheat a little bit here, right? Let's cheat a little bit. Um, and then add three convolutional 2D layers to fashion model. 
make each layer have 12 filters, kernel size of 3, okay, and a ReLU activation. You will need to specify the input shape for the first convolution 2D. The input shape in this case is, okay. Model equals sequential. Okay. Okay. So just like this. Sequential. Okay. Done deal. And then um, so and then a uh, fashion model. Uh, is it at? Okay, at. So it's asking to use uh, convolution 2D. 2D. Okay, three of them. Three of them. Let's say convolution to the three of them. Okay, so you need three of them. So I'm going to put three of this. I'm just going to copy this thing. Oh my gosh, what did I do? Ah. Uh, Okay, fashion model dot at uh, convolution two D. I said that it works. Okay, don't forget about that. And then I'm just gonna copy this. And put it here. You said three. You need three layers of this. Okay. So it's asking for three layers. And then uh, each layer have 12 filters. Right. So each layer has 12 filters. Um, input chip. Uh, so I think you just put it here. Twelve. Let's say twelve. Twelve. It's quite easy, right? And then you go back here. A kernel size of three. Uh, I think it's just let's say kernel size. Oh yeah, if you uh, you just go to the correct recommendation kernel size that's it um this one kernel size three uh and a relu activation relu activation Activation value. Do I do it? Let's see here. Input shape. An integer or tuple list of two integers. Okay. Yeah, I guess you can just say three instead of three by three. My guess. We'll see. And then we have the activation value. 
so we just activation equals to ralu right um what else let's see the input chip okay add flatten layer to page after the loss okay okay I'm just gonna copy this then and see that like that okay and then um, input chip for the first convolution 2d layer input chip um, image rows and image column and one okay let me see Image rows, image columns. One. Okay. Image rows. Image. So the the neural network knows what to expect. What kind of a uh, input chip? What kind of format? So the image rows and image columns. I think is sixty four. Am I right? No. Oh, 28 by 28, okay. 20 by 28. Okay. And only um, only one um, one uh, channel, right? Okay, I think that's it. And then uh, next one is add flatten layer to fashion model after the last convolution to the layer. So you just add fashion model dot add um, flatten how do you how do you do that let me see oh just like that okay okay that's fair enough just like that flatten um, and then add the dense layer with hundred neurons to fashion model after the flatten layer okay so you want to add fashion model um, at dense layer dense I guess I think it's like that not sure yeah Yeah, that's correct. You can see from here. Right. There you go. So we'll we'll uh, specify as 100 neurons. Um, okay. No activation. It doesn't say add your prediction layer to fashion model. okay this is the dense layer we already have a variable num class use this variable when specifying a number of nodes in this layer the activation should be softmax or you will have problems later so the last one is the prediction layer okay also dense too okay so I, I can just copy that but I want to I want to I want to I want to type it <laughs> okay typing is part of learning it is kind of a forging neural uh, pathway into your brain right the same thing as I'm, I'm as I'm talking to this um, for this YouTube channel right so this is the last layer um, also a dance layer right um and then you put a variable called num class 
uh, which is um, so this is the last layer so uh, basically there's three right convolution 2d layer and then there is the flat layer there is the dense layer so what's that three four five dense layer and then the last one is the prediction the prediction is also a dense layer remember a dense layer means all of the neurons and the dense layer has uh i think 12 neurons right because it's trying to predict 12 uh, different classes of fashion right whether it's t-shirt underwear what have you right and this last layer the neuron is connected to the previous all of connected to all of the previous input which is the fifth layer right because we have now six layer altogether right so okay so the first one is the input and then convolution 2d there's three that's four and then flatten five and then dense layer again six oh and then another one seven so seven layers altogether so it's pretty it's pretty uh deep i would say right um okay okay so so you put the number of classes at the last layer which is a dense layer and then use this variable uh when specifying the number of nodes okay the activation should be for uh, softmax so you put activation equals softmax 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 is a way to again it's a way to process um number into probability right so if you have a number between for example i don't know whatever from zero to one or from zero to ten the output right on the prediction layer right um so this softmax you put that into a softmax and then it will convert it into probability which means uh between zero to one basically like okay uh on 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 the first first class would be probably like one percent which is uh, 0 0.01 right on the second class would be 0 0.1 which is 10 percent on the third class would be 0 0.5 which is a uh, 50 percent right so everything is within zero to one uh Thing of, thing of, thing of it is a, is, a, is a probability, as a percentage. Um, okay, so we are almost done. Right? Um, let's see, I'm just going to double check. Uh, okay, now we need to compile, right? Okay, so this is, this is just specifying the model here. Okay, so we'll, we'll run this see if it works okay it's supposed to work it's supposed to work it's supposed to work syntax error positional argument follows keyword argument um why error Fashion model at convolution 12, kernel size 3, activation ReLU. Hmm. Okay, let me check. Why is that error? Input chip, activation ReLU. I don't have any idea why is that error. Okay, do you guys know why is this error? Uh, why is this an error? Um, positional argument follows keyword argument. Convolution 2D. Kernel size 3 by 3. Okay, I, I don't want to risk it. I'm just going to put, for example, 3 by 3 here. Okay, I'm just going to put like that. Probably that's the one that's making error. I don't know. 
Activision Ralu. Okay. Oops. Okay, let's run it again. Still the same. Hmm. I have no idea why is that error. Okay, probably I have to go to Google. Positional argument. I have no idea what does this mean. Copy and paste the parameter list and left some of the default values in place. Convert your letter position into keyword argument. Oh, okay, let's see. But this one works. Hmm. I don't know why. Okay. Hmm. There's something wrong the way I specify this thing. But I'm not sure which one. Um. I have no idea. Should I do this, for example? Work? No. Hmm. 
I don't get it. Why does it work? Filters. Should I put filters here? Okay, let's put filters. Let's see. No, it still doesn't work. Line seven. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. Let's fork this one. Okay. I know this is a simple mistake, but I do not know why. Like, for example, this one k equals to k, n equals to n. And so, um,. XY sequential Yeah, I don't know why it doesn't work. Huh. Oh well, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Convolution to the 12 kernel size. It looks, it looks good. I don't know why it doesn't work. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Why doesn't want to fork this one? Um, somebody's on block spot. Pushing argument is a name that is not followed by an equal sign and the and default value. A keyword argument is followed by an equal sign and an expression that gives its default value. Check your code if you have added the name of parameter to a positional argument. Okay. Wow. 
Oh, wait, wait, wait. Um, what? Ah, wait. Cross, cross, cross. Where's the cross documentation? Okay, kernel size, should I, okay, let, let's do it like this, probably, probably just like this, probably just like this, just like that, and put shape. Hmm. Equals. Oh, I have to put equal here. My gosh. That's it. Oh my gosh. Okay, it works. It's supposed to work. I'm just gonna put put this back kernel size. <laughs> Lesson learned. Okay. Now we are going to compile it. Right. Okay. Sorry, guys, about that. It's a novice uh, error here. So that's what it means. It's just equal sign. It drives you crazy. Right. Um. Compile model. Run the command fashion model dot compile. Specify the following argument. Okay. Fashion model compile. Okay. Uh, loss equals keras. Losses. So things like that, I hope in the future, in the near future, you know, probably like a year from now, just in a few months, somebody could like create a, a software, artificial intelligence, and just like can, uh, can like pinpoint, okay, this is the, like the suggested, like uh, probably uh, solutions. That would be awesome. So instead of I have to go out from the, uh, it will just inside that uh, integrated development environment will like, tell me like what other possible error or better yet it will just like um well, of course with my permission it will correct that error so i would know right and that would be like amazing and that would be yeah you know from human and artificial intelligence like work uh together right instead of like uh, artificial intelligence just totally replacing human but we it's like augmenting the human to, to be more productive. That would be cool. Okay. What, are, what am I doing here? To put uh, optimizer, cross losses dot categorical cross entropy 
okay and then we're going to use optimizer adam uh adam i think it stands for adaptive um um gradient descent ad or adaptive learning rate learning rate is the how big do you want to uh jump or how big do you want to uh, change the um the because okay so because you need to minimize the function right so you you compute uh the neurons the and then you you have the output which is a um input times weight um plus bias right and then you you put you put it through the relu function yeah you go through that process the same thing until the last layer right the prediction layer which is in this case there's 12 uh, neurons 12 you have trying to identify 12 different classes right of of fashion and um and then and then you get this output right and this this output cannot be uh like immediately can, cannot be the same as the label right so for example if you the first the first pass you will predict for example it's gonna be uh it's, so, it's supposed to be like uh, predicting this is a shirt for example is a is a is a is an image of a shirt but the first pass it's giving only for example uh point uh four shirt right it's, it's, supposed, it's supposed to be one so you have an error there right like one minus point four which is point six right the difference right and then you want to minimize this difference so you use a uh, gradient descent uh to go backwards so gradient descent it is just means um um how much error do you want to minimize like how, how much how big how big is a step uh because if you take a, a really big step you might um not uh making the error going uh uh the other way meaning for example from point four uh right you, you need you want to be gradually like to point five point six yeah and then and then you because you like uh step too big you jump for uh, pro probably uh to i don't know um uh going backwards um uh like like point two or you know it it, it, it makes it bigger right so it, uh, the the error never uh, converts never uh minimize so anyway um so so how big of a step uh so the gradient descent is a process where you can ident identify in what direction so the direction you have to take so you've kind of feel like the curve like in what and then and then and then you feel like in what direction you have to take right um to minimize error uh quickly quickly right so for example and then you have already determined oh okay i have to go that way like 45 degrees angle uh, on the let's say on the on my left instead of on the on the back south or on the back uh, let's say north or on the on the on the other side right so you have you have to determine like okay this is the direction right and how much okay so now uh, like how big of a step I have to take in that direction right is it like is it like one feet two feet three feet yeah right? so that that big of a step is basically is called a learning rate uh, and this learning rate uh, it shouldn't be just constant because as you go through the uh, the curve of uh, fitting um, uh, process you might want to take like a bigger uh, because you're still like let's say the error is so high right you want uh, to like go fast to converse fast you right so you want to take a step of a big step and then as you go down you kind of reduce the step as you as you as you uh, kind of like uh, converge um, uh, into into the uh, local minimum or the global minimum right as you minimize the error so this this um, um, kind of uh, uh, keep on adapting the learning rate is called one of the method uh, is called atom so it's called ad adaptive learning rates and so so on Okay, and it's one of the most uh, common one to be used. Okay, so we are at the. <laughs> okay, 
uh, optimizer. Okay, and then we are going to also put uh, the matrix uh, accuracy as the matrix. Right? You want to know what, how accurate is your model. Okay, so let's compile that. Okay, done. It seems to be working well. Now we, after we, so we, what we're doing right now, right? So we have, uh, we already, uh, three, three big steps. Uh, process the data, basically about reformatting the data before we just, be, before we can put it into the, into the neural network. Once we process, we um, uh, uh, make the model, right? Which is, is a neural network, how many layers, uh, how many neurons are there, right? And uh, you adjust all of the parameters uh, using what what uh, activation function, using what like uh, you, if you're using softmax or not, right? And it, whether is the neuron is dense or not, right? Once you add, so that's just identifying what model you're using for uh, the whole architecture of the neural uh, network, the deep learning, right? And then uh, the third step is you want to now to uh, compile. Compile means you want to identify what kind of a process. Uh, when you do the back propagation, when you do the uh, when you try to minimize the error, when you do the gradient descent, right? Uh, because basically, remember, deep learning is about curve fitting, right? So imagine if there's a like curve, like a face of a mass, for example, like a valleys and troughs, right? And then the first time you uh, predict it's way up there, right? Or if it's not way up there, it's just in the middle, right? So it doesn't it doesn't minimize the error, like into zero or near zero. So you want to go into there and the process of that is called compile this is you're defining the compile model right so you're defining the uh, loss as a categorical cross entropy right that's uh, part of the uh, algorithm you're uh, defining what a learning rate a process you want to use and what matrix do you want to uh, use uh, in this case is the accuracy okay so we define that now the fourth step is to fit to fit means is to train, basically, right? To train, because you already make the model, you already uh, identify the process of the back propagation, right? Now it's time to train it. Okay, so here it is. Now we are making the code to train. This is the 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 one that's um, we are already like going into the process right now the, to train, right? Okay, so fashion model. Because this is the model we already identify, and then we call fit function, which is basically the trend. And then now we're gonna put all of the parameters inside. It says the first two are arguments are the data used to fit the model, which are x and y respectively. Okay, so x and y. So remember, x is basically the training data without the label. It's already pre-processed, right? Remember pre-process on the first step, and why is the label, right? It, it tells the because we're into training right now, so we want to tell the computer, okay, this this first data is is a shoe, this first first uh, second data is a racket, okay, this third data is a t-shirt or so on, right? So that's the x and y, and then we want to um, uh, I, um, put tell the computer uh, the bed size in this case is 100 so uh, bed size is every 100 image so it's very computationally expensive if you want to compute or uh, do you say to minimize the error on every image very expensive so to make it less expensive you want to batch so in this case I do not know how it really works right but I think I think it's kind of like every hundred images that you um, you pass through in a feed forward, and then you kind of probably like average those uh, error, and then you you and then that's when you do the back propagation process, right? So it's not every image you compute the the uh, uh, you want to retune re or you want to do the back propagation or retuning the what do you call that? The, the parameters, the weight and the biases. Uh, so that's what it means. And then epoch 4, it means, uh, I always call it epoch 
but I think it's people say it's ip ip ipek ipek. So ipek is the number of um, times that the image pass through. So four means it's gonna go through four times instead of just one time. The reason of this is um, I think if I'm not mistaken, I I, I might I might be wrong uh, because you want to also make the uh, um, um, it, 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 it's kind of difficult to make a, a good model just one epoch because normally just one epoch the model is only like 70 percent accuracy right because it's just one pass this the second pass is still the same uh, data but uh, some there there are times in a different model I'm not sure about this because this is not using data augment augmentation which is uh, it's being randomized the data augmentation but this is the same so it's still the same kind of uh, training data, exactly the same, exactly. But you are, you think about it like this. Uh, the second epoch is you're already using a pre-trained model. That's what it is. The transfer learning, when you don't uh, build the model from scratch, right? You're using already like somebody else already like trained the model using a similar kind of data set, you know, uh, you, because you cannot use the model if it's the data set is totally different right for example uh, somebody already uh, uh, you know I don't know model to classify for example uh, 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 mountains right mountains are not mountains right and it, it has like almost 95 percent accuracy and you want to use that for example I don't know something totally different but still in the image category for example I don't know cat or not a cat then probably it's not a good uh, model to 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 be reused because it's kind of totally different yeah i'm not sure i might be wrong but uh just bear that in mind because not all of the uh model we can use it as a pre-trained uh as a, as a transfer learning model right so uh you can view it uh the number of epochs is like the number is it's like the second epoch the third epoch the fourth epoch here is like you you're, you're using kind of you're using a a better and better pre-trained model right because on the first epoch, right, the first uh, batch or the first, e uh, uh, sorry, yeah, the first epoch, meaning all, if you have, in this case, I think it's 700. How many uh, images do we have here? Um, yeah, 785 images, right? 785 here. 785. So, so you, so you put all of those 785 Im images, right, on the, on the neural network seven layers boom right and then your model computed right using a bad size every 100 so it means 785 i think it, it compute like seven times or eight times right to do the uh, minimizing the error right um because that's what bad size is to basically to reduce the number of competitions of the i think the 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 the, the of, or fine tuning the 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 parameters right the weights and the biases so done one epoch 785 images right so you got let's say 70 percent accuracy right so it's already kind of pre-trained right so and then you reuse this same model and then you 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 pass through 785 images again on the second epoch right so it's like a transfer learning boom there you go i got this now i got this so that's what epoch now i, I kind of understand what epoch is okay before kind of like yeah not sure but okay good oh, i'm tired i keep on talking okay so epoch four and then uh validation split oh interesting i think we talked about this and uh like yeah earlier that you want to uh, divide your uh, training data into two the training and the validation, right? So if you have 785 images and then we specify validation split is 2% or sorry, 20%, 0 0.2, which means about roughly what, 78 times two, that's about 80 times, 160 images will be like set aside for the validation, right? And why is the purpose of the validating of, uh, you want to set aside that? Do you still remember? I'll give you three, 10 seconds. One, two, three. I cheated. Okay, only three seconds. If you can answer it, that's amazing. Okay. 
So the purpose, uh, one of, I think one of the purpose that I can think of the validation is to make sure your model doesn't overfit, like to generalize, right? So, yeah, you can put on in the comments below if you have, you can think of it, like what are like the advantages of having a validation, right? Because I can see there's uh, other, um, yeah, okay, anyway, we'll, we'll go through this. It's, it's taking too long. This is probably like more than one hour already. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Boom. Invalid syntax. I like this. I like this kind of problem. Okay. Line two. What's invalid about this? Hmm. X, Y, bed size. Epoch. Hmm. Oh, oh. I forgot to put comma here. This is easier. Oh, I'm not really good at this. <laughs> this forget to put comma, forget to put equal sign. You know, it's like a headache. Okay. Ah, it's working. Yes. Hmm. Wait a minute. Why is 48,000 samples? I don't get it. I thought there's only like 785. Hmm. Right here. On the training. 785. Yeah, I don't know why is it 40,000. Oh, which means it's like there's a uh, fifty two thousand. Okay. Anyway, um, I'll try to think that later on. Okay. Uh, so epoch one, right? Epoch one. So basically, it's training forty eight thousand, right? Here for the loss is forty nine percent, right? The accuracy is eighty two. Yeah. Okay, the validation loss is 38. Validation accuracy is 86. So actually, when you when you validate the data, is better um, than when you train it. Okay. And then the second epoch is is getting better, 87, right? And then the the validation also is getting better too until the third epoch 89 almost and then it's getting better so this is good actually because the the training and the validation it's kind of the same that's 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 i think that's a good sign right and then the the loss um is decreasing too from as the number of epoch grows i think that's good and then the loss in the training also is kind of decreasing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The 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 thing that I don't understand is why is the forty eight thousand? Where does it? Where does it? Forty eight thousand. How does it do that? I mean, I don't get that. Okay. Okay. Anyway, we'll continue this next time. So I hope um, this session is useful for you guys. It's perfectly, it's uh, definitely is very useful for me. I learn about uh, more about stuff just to like crystallize what are the concepts of deep learning because you know deep learning is kind of like complicated. You know, for like beginners like me, so I have to kind of yeah redo it over and over again. And this is part of the uh, learning process just just talking and uh trying to teach uh, to share what i know okay i'll see you guys next time on the same channel peace